seeing things I could not see before. And may God help, help us to understand this agape love better. Let's give God a clap of it. So we say that it is not, does not come, we are not born with agape love. The love your parents showed, if your parents were not born again, that love is just a family kind of love, a fleshly love. It's also a selfish love, you know, uh, but it's not the agape love we are talking. This is the God type of agape love. Uh, that's why we have to, to study it from different angles to understand what it is. The agape love is the true engine in ministry and testimony. It is the key and the magnet God used in the early church to attract people to become uh, born again. And also, even up till now, in times of revival, what people, uh, what people observe in a church is not so much how well they sing or how well they preach, but they sense, they feel. This agape love has like a fragrance, like a perfume smell. It's something, the, it changes the sound of the person's voice. It's a very powerful thing. I, I read, not too long ago, I read a testimony. There was um, uh, in an orphanage in Chicago, that is in, in America. They said that they brought some children that were on the streets, small children. They were just rooming about, uh, street children. So they brought them, some of them, to the orphanage to take care of them. So one small boy, the boy was like four years old. Uh, he was born and kind of abandoned. The parents were taking drugs. He was just, in fact, he lived on the streets. So they brought this small boy to the orphanage and uh, they gave him a bath. They gave him, I mean, clean clothes and they showed him a bed where he will sleep. Small boy. So, so they told him he can go and sleep. So he asked, uh, you mean, I, uh, the, the bed sheet was clean so he said, you mean I should lie down there? He said, yes, you lie down there. Then he said, what for? He said, because he, <laughs> the truth is that he has never slept on a bed all his life. He always sleeps on the street, on, on, the, on the ground, or maybe on a carton. He said, what for? He said, that's your bed. That, that is where, where, where you sleep. So he tried small, small, small. Before he, he lie down there, he looked around. He's like, then, uh, then the... The lady, the matron said, okay, this is your bed. From now, relax. You are a good boy. God loves you. That's what he said. God loves you. Then, uh, then uh, before going to sleep, the matron came again and, and covered him and kissed him on his, on his uh, forehead. The, and the boy immediately cleaned, his, cleaned the forehead. He said, what for? What is this? What for? He has never been kissed in his life. So he doesn't know what was the meaning of that. So the matron said, I, I kiss you because I love you. God loves you and I love you. So though the boy cleaned the kiss, the whole night he was thinking about it. Small boy, oh. so is this what love is? To sleep in a bed with clean bed sheet and somebody kiss you for your forehead. <laughs> the next day in the morning, he went to look for the matron. He said, can you love me again? What he wanted is another kiss. Because he has never experienced it. So this is so strange and so sweet and so good for you, for him. So you see that love has an effect on people. If you have never felt true love from somebody, of course your, your spouse may love you, your children may love you, but what I'm saying, the real love comes from God. It can pass through people, but it's from God. This boy has never felt love. And to him, a clean bed sheet and a kiss on the forehead, that is what is called love. So the matron kissed him again. Then he went to play or something. After about one hour, he ran again to matron's office. <laughs> can, can, can you show love to small boy like me again? So like four or five times a day, he will go to the matron for a kiss on the forehead. Then after some weeks, a lady came. So the lady apparently is a rich woman and the matron said that the lady wants to adopt him because at the orphanage they look for people, foster parents that can adopt them so that they will, uh, they will have a better future, they can go. So a rich lady came and uh, uh, brought to him, that is he, 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 she picked him from a picture 
and she brought a lot of toys like this small car, you know, for children. And she brought a lot of toys. All the other children, they were jealous of him. See, fine, madam wants to take you home. Wants other. So this boy with all the toys, he still stayed like this. Then he went to the metro and he said, Can this, will this lady love me? What he wanted to say, will this lady still kiss me? Forget the toys. Will she still kiss me like you? Because if she does not kiss me, I don't want to go with her. You see? Even money, you cannot bribe. Once, once you test real love, you cannot sell it. And you cannot be bribed even with toys. Please give God a clap of it. <laughs> Did you like this story? Do you understand the story? Okay. So lay your hands upon your head. I use it as I, I want to kiss all of you on your head <laughs> in Jesus' name. So remember that we are under the big umbrella of love, uh, of wind and fire. The wind is still blowing, the fire is still burning. So you can see this, in, in fact, in the form of love. We also read about matters of uh, loving indifference from uh, Romans 14. We have studied some things. We said that these things, they are important teachings, but they are not essential to our salvation. That's the way we dress. Uh, uh, some people drink, uh, some Christians drink alcohol. Some they don't. Some they smoke cigar. They don't. And other, uh, other things like that that are not essential to salvation. We say that we have to agree on the basic doctrines of salvation. They are not for debate. But for all these uh, matters of indifference, or they are called also gray areas, we can lovingly disagree without quarreling. So we are learning from this. That's why Romans 14, we have been following. And today we look how to, that you should not allow our good to be spoken as evil. That's what we are talking today. So just to remind you what we have said from Romans 14, never be a stumbling block to anyone. And do not grieve your brother, especially when it comes to matters of indifference. That is, don't help anybody to backslide. Don't encourage and don't help anybody to backslide. If somebody comes, somebody comes to say, ah, one woman comes, I'm pregnant. I don't want this uh, uh, baby. Uh, and, and the father of my baby drove me, doesn't want to hear about me. Please, I need money to do abortion. Will you, will you sponsor that? What's the answer? Do you sponsor that? You see? That is, don't help anybody to fall into sin or to make this sin to be worse. Do not reject food. We have spoken that one. All food is clean. We pray for every food we receive. We pray and we eat it. It's clean and good. Also, we said love, love never discriminates people. Love never looks at the, just at the clothes or level of education or social status. No, love always looks at the soul and at the heart. Also, we said, do not damage your conscience. If your conscience tells you to do something, then do it. Don't damage your conscience and also don't force anybody to damage their own conscience. If you see that the person is afraid that if he eats this food, the, for him, oh, this food is unclean. This food has witch inside. Don't force, if you can eat the food, don't force him to eat because you have the faith to eat it. He doesn't have the faith. By forcing him, you are telling him to fight his conscience, to damage his conscience, and the damage there is more than eating the food. So conscience is a very big thing in the life of every human being, especially for us as believers. So now we say, do not let your good be spoken up as evil. That's what we read in Romans 14. So what can that one be the good? This is a command. Don't let your good or what you consider to be good. Okay, what do you consider to be good? Your name, your reputation, your testimony, your marriage, your children, your family. I mean, are they not good things? Don't put yourself in any situation or position which because of you want to eat chicken where they don't eat chicken, because of that people will now will, will insult you that, that, that you are a yeah, man. What is, what is saying here? Be sure, be wise and be sensitive that in all situations, the thing that you appreciate, that you believe God has given to you, don't play with it, protect it. You, 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 can, you, can, you can fight a battle and 
and win small but lose more than what you win and that is very important so here we see uh, that as uh, as uh, mature christians we have to be sensitive to other people's point of view like when missionaries go to preach let's say they go from america they go to uh, africa they are trained there is a training uh, course in which they have to learn the way the people they think about it do you understand what i'm saying they cannot just go there like americans and behave like americans and think that just because they know how to preach the gospel the people will receive the word no there is a procedure in fact if they don't understand the culture and the feelings of the people they will their ministry will, will not be fruitful so i just check i look for some examples like that there was uh, some stories like that to tell you there was a man an american evangelist he was invited to preach in pakistan so pakistan is mostly like i think a muslim country so he went there with the uh, with the bible in his hand to preach it was like a crusade so he went there to preach with power you know the way that is american people can talk with confidence like that he read the scripture he opened the bible read the scripture but on that platform they built there was no pulpit so after he read the finish he put the the bible on the floor and continued to talk the moment he put the Bible on the floor, nobody listened again. They, the people sat there, they became agitated. They, they, they had to, somebody had to go, oh, God, oh, God, beg, take the, put it uh, somewhere. They had to bring something like a box where you can put the Bible. Because in their culture, any book that is called holy, like the book of God, be Bible or uh, Quran should not be on the ground where by mistake you go and, and touch it is their culture so this man did not think twice you know he just put it there because you know like the moment he did that nobody listened again he had to apologize but that day the the whole thing was uh, was a disaster so you see that you see how uh, the uh, uh, being ignorant of some cultures i also read that for example that in uh, South America people don't keep to time <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> what they say no no South American time uh -huh. that is they will invite you to to go maybe to a, a meeting or something the people come late like in my country or in Europe or in America if you give max if you are late 10 minutes it already shows that you don't behave well you may lose the, if you, if you go for an, an interview to get a job, they will not give you the job. They say this person does not know time. So they are very strict. They want to see discipline in that area. That's in Europe and in America. But as I read in some countries in South America, I'm not calling Nigeria, in some in South America, they say you can come later, that you, you always have an excuse, say, no transport or no this, no, no that, that, to the extent that even churches the time they start to church they cannot put a time because they have to wait for the people to gather before they can start church like here we start nine o'clock wednesday we start five o'clock saturday class is at five o'clock even if they are at least if there are two or three people jesus said i'll be there with us is it not so if we wait for all of us to gather that means the the uh, the church can start maybe by 10 or by 11. so i'm just saying that it is part of the is a different culture and if you get angry with these people all the time it means you don't want to you don't want to preach to them then um, <laughs> in nigeria <laughs> You will not escape. Oh. <laughs> yes, last Sunday we had a lighthouse. So, I, you know, I attend the light. If you don't have lighthouse, come to my lighthouse. I'm not the leader. Oh, I'm not the one talking. So they were talking some things like that, and they brought this subject. So let me just bring it to you. The, so one of the sisters, they said that she was born left-handed. To her, left hand is strong more than the right hand. So she said that, even as a child, if she wants to give her mommy something with the left hand, the mommy will correct her. 
the siblings will correct her, will shout on her. That even now, sometimes she forgets. She goes to the market, she will give people something with the, or she wants to take it with the left hand. Even now that she's a woman, they will still correct her. Am I correct? He said that the left hand is not good at all. That uh, I don't know what was the meaning of it is on the left hand. I have heard of it when I came to Nigeria because in my country, right and left, they're the same. I, I have never heard of a culture like this. But when I came to Nigeria, Tali told me, be sure that you don't stretch your left hand. People will misinterpret you. People may think you are a witch. Ha! I said, just this left hand. He said, yes, yeah, so, so because Tali told me this one long ago, hmm, I don't think I, in these 40 something years I gave any, to anybody with the left hand. Even if I hold something with the right hand, then I'll change it on the left hand, then I will still show you this because of Nigeria. I, I don't want to break the rules. I don't want to offend people unnecessarily. But you can see that this one, they are matters of indifference. So let's give God a clap of. So why I gave you these uh, examples is to see that a thing can be right on its own and still wrong in a particular circumstance. Do you understand? That if you insist, but this is right, ah, it's, the, it's the right thing to do. It, because of the atmosphere, because of the culture, because of the understanding of the weaker Christians, that thing that can be right for you may be seen as wrong. That means if you insist on that thing, you may gain the argument. If you tell somebody, see, oh, I give you, I give you uh, 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 100,000 naira. Then you stretch the left hand. You see the person drawing back. Then you, you start to insult the people. So you, you, so you know what money? Okay, then go sit down. Go. That is for as long as you insist on something like this. The, the offense, eventually, though the person will come and take it because he needs the money, but you have offended the spirit. That is, you have gained an argument, but you have lost something more. What can you lose? You have lost some of your reputation, some of your, of your testimony. The person will take the money, but will say that this ye ye man will give me money. That is, you have lost the respect to, that you are Christian. That's why you see the weak in the faith, they judge the strong in the faith. So it is very, very important that we should know that you, you, you have to choose your battles wisely. If left hand and right hand is an issue in Nigeria, then change it to the right one. Please give God a clap of it. So you see, it is the one that is strong in the faith that has more room for flexibility is the strong in the faith that can humble himself more you cannot expect the weak in the faith to humble he's already weak it's you that you are stronger you have to be flexible and find a way to to apply in fact to give god all the glory and all the credit to my husband 99 percent of what me i know of behaving in nigeria i have learned it from him since we came to Nigeria, he did not teach me when we were in Romania, but when, when we came to Nigeria, he took it like full-time job to train me, to teach me how to behave among Nigerians. In fact, for a long time, I did not know why, why is he, what is the problem? Because according to me, the way I was behaving in Romania, let me behave like that here. He corrected me many times. And really, I did not know the purpose of this training. I did not know if especially, but can I say now, now that he went to heaven, I, I have graduated from Dr. Lee's school of, of Nigerian behavior. So you see, he's helping me now because I know, I understand, not everything, but I understand enough in, so that in the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I behave, I don't offend you unnecessarily. I don't insist on my right and make you to look like a foolish person. I, I, I am flexible. I, I try to understand you. I try to come from a lower position so that the two of us, we can have fellowship. So perchance, I can give you the word of God. Not because of my ideas, now my ministry is scattered. Because of that, that means if I win an argument and I scatter my ministry, that is, it means I'm a fool. There is a saying, there is a saying, maybe you have heard it. It says, uh, pound foolish, 
Pennywise. Have you heard of a word like that? Okay, let's use it for Nigeria. Naira. Naira wise, Kobo foolish. Do you understand the meaning? Okay. For you to understand the meaning of this, pound is made of 100 pennies. Is it not like that? Okay. So, if in a battle, I, I, I win a penny, like I win a Kobo, and I lose one Naira, what do you call that business? What do you call? Bad business. What type of businessman am I? Bad businessman. So, what does this mean? Because that's what we are saying. We have to learn to protect our good that God has given to us and not losing it, especially through arguments and stumbling blocks. So, for example, to be, to be Naira wise and Kobo foolish, Kobo foolish, it means is somebody that takes care of little, little expenses. That is, he doesn't want to spend money anyhow as of today. He's gathering. The person is almost uh, greedy with money. That is, I don't want to, this one, I don't want to spend money. That is, he's gathering money, gathering money. But after that, he goes uh, and takes uh, credit to buy a car. He that is suffering here, he doesn't, he seems, like for example, a woman, she does not want to buy biscuits, he doesn't want to let the children manage uh, Eba, manage this, that is, she's very, very uh, particular on the type of food we eat in this house. Then one day you see the same woman goes out and buys a new designer dress. You understand what it is? In small battles, she looks like a champion. Hey, the woman, the woman can economize. But see, all the economy she has made there, she wants for a dress that maybe you take pressing iron and burn it. This is what you call foolishness. Or, let the women not be offended, or like a man at home, husband, my wife. You know, uh, you know, Nigeria is not, then uh, we should not spend money for this, for this. The dresses you buy, they are too expensive for the children. Go and look for cheaper one. That the, the husband is telling the wife. The wife says, okay, my husband, okay. So the, the husband is insisting to economize money at home. Huh? At the same time, he goes to open saloon for girlfriend. The money that he has economized here, he has wasted it in another place. Or a businessman, he wants a contract, there, there is a contract. So he has a good opportunity to apply, to have a contract. There is a company that is advertising contract. So he's writing everything, quotation, everything, everything. After that, they say that he has to send, there are other, of course, other competitors. Businessmen, are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Other competitors. Then after he finishes the quote and everything, staying day and night there to make sure he puts everything correct. He goes to FedEx, and FedEx says, sir, to send this thing to Abuja is, uh, I don't know, maybe 5,000 Naira. Ah, the man, he says, too expensive. So he goes to the ordinary local post office and put all that thing in a regular uh, mail. Regular mail, regular letter to go there to send it to Abuja. By the time the letter arrives there, it's too late. He has lost the contract. For, to economize 5,000, he has lost the contract. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is what Apostle Paul says. Be sure, be wise, that in your relationship with people, you will not just gain some small, small gain, in your testimony and scatter the old testimony that people say that this, this person is not born again. No? The way I see him, because one big mistake like that will cancel all the good, good things, small, small good things you have done. Please give God a clap. Of I want to read a beautiful scripture, 1 Corinthians 14.1. I will read it from NIV, New Living Translation, and contemporary English version. And look at it well so that you can memorize it. At least the first four words. Follow the way of love. First Corinthians 14.1 NIV. 
follow the way of love. If they say follow the way of love, it means this love, is this stationary? What is love doing? Moving. What is love doing? Leading. So love is moving, so what are we supposed to do? Move, follow, love. Because if you leave gap, it means you are disconnecting yourself from love. So love, is, that's why I'm saying love is a master, a mentor, a champion. Follow the way of love. That is NIV translation. Uh, New Living Translation says, let love be your highest goal. Goal, G-O-A-L. Let love be your highest goal. If at all you want to, in this life, you want to live a life that is worthy, let, follow this love. Let love be your highest goal. And in contemporary English version says, let love be your guide. Love not the way. Nigeria say, follow him who no road. Love knows the road. We don't know the road. That's why we follow love. Immediately you start to vex, quarrel, this one. That is, you want to disconnect. You don't want to follow love. You'll surely fall into trouble. May God, that is not our portion. May we follow. As love leads, we follow. He, love is our guide and our master. Of course, that love is Jesus Christ. So please give God a clap of it. Okay, so now we go now again to Hebrews. We are now talking about Esau. Please give attention. Esau is a negative character. It's difficult to preach because people say, I don't want to hear negativity. Well, 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 I'm seeing it in the Bible. So there is a reason. So I want to read again Hebrews 12, 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many will be defiled. Are you seeing that? Hmm? Look at it. He says, the, the, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. First of all, we see Esau is the very first person in the Bible that despised, not just the birthright, despised the grace of God. He fell short from the, he did not appreciate the grace. So you see that this grace, they say grace, amazing grace, not everybody appreciates. He's the first person in the Bible who rejected, did not appreciate the grace of God. And look at it. Uh, if you reject the grace of God, your heart will become bitter. Then any root of bitterness will spring up and cause trouble. The was springing up, are you seeing the springing up? The word springing up is the word that shows a small growth. Like you put a seed and a small plant is coming. Like you plant corn and you see small green comes out of it. So that means the root of bitterness grows how at the beginning? Big or small? Small. That is, you have to detect this root of bitterness when it is small. Springing up, that is, it's small. And this bitterness causes trouble, is a troublemaker. In the home, in the marriage, in the church, anyway, is a troublemaker. But look at it, the root of bitterness starts small. Springing up is like small plantation. And by that, many people is defiled. So bit bitterness, Esau was a man of bitterness. Esau was a root of bitterness. And causes trouble, a troublemaker, and by it, many are defiled. That is, it's like a virus. It influences for negative, many people. For, for one bitter person, the whole family is, is kind of poisoned. The whole church is poisoned. So it is something to detect when it's small, to uproot when he's small, to, to, to reject and to repent on his small. So this is a very great warning to us. Esau was a bitter man that God hates and man hates. Anytime you read about Esau's story, is it not something that makes you to, 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 to be angry with him, to hate him? We, uh, we, we see that he was a man of the field. That is, he was like a champion. He, he loved to go and hunt and maybe fish. He was the one that has a body build and this one. And he brought food to, to his father. So his father was like his God. That's why in trouble he pray, prayed to the, to, to, the, to the father. And then, then the most tragic thing about Esau, please look at me. What Esau did by 
by asking for that food that Jacob had. And Jacob, Jacob did not deceive him and Jacob did not steal it. But Jacob, can I say, try this luck. Possibly that Jacob has been thinking about it. What is the birthright? For you to understand the tragedy of Esau. The birthright, you had it on the video. Every family, the first son is entitled to the birthright. And in this family, Esau was the one that came first. Though Jacob is a twin, but he came first. So he had, by, by law, by tradition, he has to have the birthright. The birthright, it is a, it is a spiritual blessing. Uh, that comes that you have to receive by faith in which when the father dies you is like you take uh, over the father in the family so it is the position of spiritual leadership for the family it is it, you become the pastor or the priest in the family the the survival of the family and the blessing of the whole family depends on who is in charge, who, is, who has the better right. So you see Esau, he knew, of course he knew what is better right. But apparently he did not appreciate. He did not want uh, to become the pastor or the priest of the home. He, in the book of Hebrews, you see Hebrews 11, he said, Isaac blessed Esau and Jacob. Esau still remained a son. To Jacob, he did not. Jacob did not disown him to be that. Is that he, he did not say he's a, he's not a son. He still remained his son. But what he lost was a spiritual blessing to be the leader that will continue with the family prosperity. And apparently, Jacob loved that, and he has been thinking in his mind on how to this. And the prophecy to Rebecca was what. The older shall serve the younger. There was a prophetic word like that. And that's why Rebecca, in a way, loved Jacob because he, he knew that through Jacob, their family will survive. But uh, that is, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I just want to say that Jacob, I mean that Esau, for whatever reason in his heart, he despised the grace of God. He despised spiritual things. He despised the spiritual gifts. If we put it now in a local, I mean, to understand, he did not like God, he did not like Christ, he did not like church, he did not like Bible, he looked down on, on them that they are just, uh, I beg, not, 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 in, not nonsense. And he traded that position for food. That is, the, the, the loss of his flesh, what he wanted, and now, right now, had more power over him in his decision than spiritual benefits. Now, the, so the bitter people, one thing about them is that they don't have self-control. They, they are very selfish. They want to have the thing and to have it now. And spiritual things, they are second place to them. I want to ask a question. Do you know people, even on Facebook, that talk anyhow about churches? Or talk anyhow about pastors. Have you had people like that? Have you had? Have you seen? Okay, it is very possible that they are following a person called Esau. Remember that Esau was a champion when it came to shooting. I mean, outside, he, was a, he, he, he knew how to shoot animals and this. He was not what you call a mumu. Okay. So, but the Bible says in Hebrews 11 that he was a fornicator and a profane person, or fornicator and godless. Fornicator means that he loved, uh, uh, sexual lust was part of his, he loved to, uh, to have women. He married two women that are pagan women. So because of that, both Isaac and Rebecca were grieved. When he saw that the parents are grieved, then he went to marry the daughter or the granddaughter of Ishmael. That is his kind of uh, cousin like that. And after that, he married all the pagan, all the women he married, they are pagan women. And they made life for the parents, his parents miserable. So you see people, they come to church. They say they are Christians, but all their mind and their heart, they are, they are, they are with unbelievers. You see Christian men, they say when I want to marry, I want to marry a Christian woman. And true, true, they marry a Christian woman and we have a wedding. For you to know the heart of that man, don't look at the wife all the time. Look at the type of girlfriend. 
the girlfriend, any her woman, unbeliever does not, in fact, swear. Do this if the if that is the type of uh, uh, the girlfriend the man has, that is how the man is. The wife is here crying and fasting and praying. The girlfriend is dead. The man is more inclined to the girlfriend, though he stays at home with the wife. So this one, they are very serious issues. That is, it is possible to gain stew on this earth. It's possible to gain material things and material benefits and lose spiritual reward. Very, very possible. Because you see the way we talk, yes, if you are saved, you are, you are forever saved. It's true, but when it comes to rewards, you can lose rewards. It is very possible that we take the grace of God for granted. Because people tell us that if you are born again, you are born again forever, which is true if you are indeed born again. But because of that, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? No. Because if you see somebody... He, know, he says he's born again. He comes to church and he's still li living a life of, of, uh, of immorality. Then, then something is wrong. It means he's taking the grace of God for granted. He's already go drawing there close to Esau. Then now I want to give you a very interesting scripture. Please look at it. Proverbs 14.10. The heart knows its own bitterness and a stranger does not share in his joy. We only look at the first, first, uh, the first sentence. The heart knows its own bitterness. Are you seeing there? This bitterness, because Esau was a bitter man. Bitterness, where does he, where does he dwell? In the heart. That is, bitterness is not something visible. Is very deep. Is hidden inside the heart. Is the only. It's only you that you know that you are bitter in a way. Bitterness will manifest later, but is very deep. That means the first thing we know about bitter people, because the matter is hidden and is not outside and people don't see. They they are most of them they are hypocrites. That is, they pretend they are Christian, they are good like that, but they are hiding something deep inside. They, they, and it is very hard for them to repent because it is something hidden. It's something shameful. They are supposed to come and say, uh, God, I have a bitter heart, I have a bitter mentality. Then, then, go, uh, then repent, then change, and the Holy Spirit will feel. If not, very, they are very difficult. These bitter people... For you to know the mentality, there are people that are negative, always in their heart. They are only thinking of bad things. They are only thinking of sinful things. Everything they see, even if you say, see this, uh, see the way these people, this couple looks happy in the heart. You say happy for nothing. I know the man. I know say not thief. Every time they have this permanent negative mentality and grudge in their heart, it's like an engine that moves. So the best thing he can do, he will not talk what is in his heart, but the thing is in his heart. Every heart knows its own bitterness. So the people that know is not just him or her, the people that know is who? People that are close to them, like the spouse. It is the spouse that will come. Maybe the wife will come and say, Malia, the way my husband, they talk, ah, I get headache. Everything I say now is also bad thing. You know, you know, even they see something good in this world. That's why the wife, because the bitterness is coming close because the wife is, is close to him. Oh, the man will come, Malia, the, what my wife, they talk, you, they see him for church, they dress for, for, for house. Hey! Now, now, the word where it comes from, the, from my mouth, I fear my wife. You see, it's the spouse that also knows that there is a problem. They are negative people. And there is a saying that negative people with this negative mentality, no matter how much you help them, they can never succeed. Is it not true? But people that are positive, can I say, we feel with the Holy Spirit, eh? small help, they succeed. So these people, they, they are trapped in a negativity and because of that, God cannot help them. 
and they become poor, they become lonely, they, 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 their dreams, they don't, uh, they are the people that will tell you, say, when I was young, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do this. Many of them say, I wanted to serve God, I wanted to do this one, but he said, but because of situation. I said, which situation? He said, Nigeria. I said, is it Nigeria that is stopping you to serve God? Is God in, in worry? Is, it, is God not in heaven? So you see, they are very selfish, very negative. They have ambitions to do something in this world, but the ambition, they're always selfish. They, are, they, they cannot even imagine that, well, if God gives me money, if God gives me promotion or something, hey, thank God, <laughs> that is, I will use uh, my tithe for the work of God and I can help humanity. No, that's not the way they think at all. Forget humanity. All their mind is that a uh, hen a day I go I go I go enjoy. Their kind of enjoyment is always wicked and always selfish. Also remember because go, because in a way they know that God is God and they have lost big thing. It's like they have gained small thing but they have lost big thing. They are always they always feel cheated. Any little thing, if you cheat them, even small, let's say you, they lose small money or something, they will make it like they have lost, I don't know what type of treasure. Because they are negative, they have a tendency to hurt other people with their mouth. But when you hurt them back, small thing, they are very sensitive. They will snap, they will shout, they are this, they are, they are very, they are, their opinions are very strong. Bottom line, they are very difficult people. In any family, in any place, in any organization, and in any church. So we are commanded in the book of Hebrews 12, let no bitter root spring up because this will cause trouble and will defile many, will spoil the minds of many. From one bitter person, this bitterness will start to spread to other people. Other people that love the Bible, small time, they, they too, they don't love. It, it is the influence of, of bitter spirits. So you can see that it is very possible to call yourself a Christian and still have a tendency, let me gain material wealth now. Forget that one. Jacob was not perfect. And also, bitter people, they are liars. Did I not show you? He said that, is this Jacob that stole, uh, uh, deceived me to take the, this? The truth is that Jacob did not deceive. He said, he wants you, I will sell it. And he paid for it. And so you see, then Jacob says, swear that you give me the birthright. He swore. The Bible said that later he discovered this mistake. Later he knew that he lost big thing. And he wanted to take the birthright back. But God witnessed the transaction he already saw he doesn't need it. So though he cried to take it back, he could not retrieve the, the birthright again. Jacob, he became God of Abraham, Isaac, and who? And Jacob, not Esau. He could not retrieve. So in a way, I read in the commentary, this Esau is one of the most sad people in the Bible. He's what you call a loser. He's... Uh, he's uh, uh, his, his descendants, the Edomites, all of them have problems. They are all troublemakers. One of his descendants is King Herod the Great. You know, when we do nativity. Herod the Great is a descend, is an Edomite. He's from Edom. And after Jesus died, all the King Herod, all the Edomites, they just vanish. Right now, there is no place where there is no one that is called the descendants of the Edomites till today. But the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, are they not still the Jews where you see? And even the Christians like that, we are, so you see, he, refused, he rejected to be on the lineage that will survive no matter what. He, he, he sold the, the spiritual benefit to be in the lineage of Messiah. So again, I'm saying it is possible to gain something today and for that lose big thing tomorrow. May we never be found among this kind of a situation. So just in case 
you, the, what I'm talking now, it makes some sense to you. Remember that bitterness is in the heart. Only you know about it for now. Or maybe your spouse, your spouse has told you many times that the way you talk, you, you, your mouth is too negative. It, the, the spouse may be right. So if that's a situation, then, then you should take this message as a warning, as a serious matter, and then repent, uproot. Bible tells us to do self-examination, to uproot that thing, ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. Let bitterness go. Let negativity go and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you want to stand, stand. You want to kneel, kneel. Anyone you want to do, let's pray. Bitterness also is the cause of many sicknesses, especially chronic sicknesses. Stomach ulcer, high blood pressure, diabetes, migraine headaches. They're all connected with bitterness. And doctors cannot treat them well. I say, don't stay where you stay. If you, are, if you have been sitting down, change position. You either stand or kneel or lie down. This is a very serious moment. Oh, you have married a bitter person. That bitter person has defiled you, has spoiled something in, in, in your computer, in your spirit. There is virus in you, you don't know. That's why you are too slow spiritually. Remain in the spirit. God hears prayers. If your parents were bitter, and all the time they spoke negative words to you, something in your computer, in the spirit, has been damaged. You don't really know how to love. And marriage without love is a disaster. It's a tragedy. It's like an incurable disease. Change my heart, oh God, make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God, may I be like you. Again, change my heart. Make it. Bitterness is in the heart. Change my heart. Oh, oh Jesus. May I be like you. For you are the potter. the potter. You are the potter. Make me again, Lord. This, this is, is what I
want to be like you, Jesus. May I be like you. Without, without words. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your war. Your word is settled in heaven forever. The world can never bow, can never bow to us. We have to bow to the world. Lord, your word is like a double-edged sword. It has penetrated our heart and has exposed this virus of bitterness in many of us. Lord, we thank you for this surgery that you have done this morning by your word and by your spirit. Lord, we confess that we have gone close to bitter people and they have influenced the way we think and the way we feel and the way we make these decisions. It is true that when they rejected spiritual things, we did not correct them. We, 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 we agreed with them. We, we saw that even the grace of God is not as strong uh, as material things. We have attended churches where they said that money is more than grace. God, have mercy upon us. Lord, this morning we pray for mercy. We pray for mercy, Lord. We cannot argue with you. We cannot justify our sin. Our heart, Lord, our heart is paining us right now. We take authority in the name of Jesus and we command every evil spirit of bitterness, selfishness, negativity, grumbling, grudges, materialism, greediness, foolishness, ignorance, any poverty mentality we command, leave us and go in the name of Jesus. We uproot. The Bible says every plant the Father has not planted shall be uprooted and thrown into the fire. We uproot this small growth of bitterness that wants to grow inside our heart. We uproot you, we throw you into the fire in the name of Jesus every covenant done against us that as our parents and our grandparents are bitter we too will be bitter and foolish any covenant like that we destroy it right now in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit please come and take control restore back to us Lord the joy of our salvation help us Lord we follow the way of love let love be our master. Let love be our guide. Let us follow step by step. Love knows the way because love is in Jesus and Jesus is the way. Help us, Lord, to follow. Help us to live behind the way of darkness, the way of the world. We don't love the world. We love you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to change our character, restore back our testimony. Help us, Lord, to behave like Jesus behaves. Give us that sensitivity to the people around us, to the culture and the different, uh, uh, different styles of different people. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves, to be flexible to these people so far we have a, we, we can have fellowship and tell them about Jesus. Lord, I pray that you restore back to us the anointing of an evangelist. Lord, that we have the courage, the desire, the hunger to go and tell people about Jesus. Because Jesus is the best gift we have. More than money, more than other things, more than uh, husband or wife, children. Jesus is the best. So Lord, help us to give the best to other people. Help us not be selfish and keep the best only for ourselves. Help us, Lord, that the good thing that you give to us, our name, our testimonies, our families, our business, the good thing you have given to us, let us not put ourselves in a position that people will insult this good thing and people will declare that they are evil. Hey, God, we need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us this morning and speaking to us as Father talks to children. We are hearing you, Lord. Your voice is sweet. We understand your voice. You said that the sheep, they hear the voice of the shepherd and follow. But the voice of the stranger, the voice of the world, we are not hearing that voice. We can, in fact, we run from that voice and follow Jesus. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory for the success this morning in the service. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.